In the digitizing process video, we planned out a design, got the graphic on screen, planned everything out, got our stitch types up there. Now I want to do an example of, from start to finish, how to actually digitize that design. Each of the tools that I will use, uh, we'll discuss in their respective videos. Let's get the graphic on screen. So I'm going to go to File and Open, or click on the Open icon. I'm going to use that same design again, so it's in Local Disk C, Designs, Graphics. I'm going to change my files of type to all graphics so that I can see them. Scroll down. I'm going to grab Earth Day, open that up. Then I'm going to size my graphic. I'm going to choose my hoop, get it on screen, scale this down so that I can make sure that I'm fitting within those hoop limits. That looks pretty good to me. Now, we've planned out uh, the order of elements that we're going to do, and I'm going to use this overlay program so that you can see my thought process and the plan. So we talked about doing the sky first and having that be a fill, and then the mountain and having that be a fill. And so let's start with the sky. I'm going to grab my complex fill tool. I tend to digitize in very contrasting colors and then make them the right colors later, the way it's easier for me to see. I'm going to digitize around the sky. Coming around using left clicks to make straight points or, or extreme angles, right clicks for curves. Finish that up. It doesn't have a hole, so I'm going to hit enter, put my entry point, my exit point, and drag my stitch direction across. And as I did that, I was paying attention. I'm going to put this in 3D so it's a little easier to see. I was paying attention to how those stitches are pushing. So they're going to push all in one direction, and I don't have to meet back up with myself. So that's going to work well for me. Now I'm going to come down, grab my complex fill. I'll grab a little bit of a darker purple. Come in here to do the mountain. You'll also notice that as I'm digitizing around this shape, I am not sticking super close to that edge. I'm giving myself a little bit of room. Ideally, in embroidery, uh, we want a little bit of overlap. If things line up on screen, they're probably not going to line up when they sew out. So if I give myself a little bit of room, a little bit of overlap, um, covering it up with this black satin stitch at the end is going to clean everything up. I'm going to grab my next color, digitize that middle mountain, entry, exit, always pushing away from that center, and we'll give it a slightly different stitch direction, and then Let's grab another color for this lower part. Here we go. Coming around, coming back up. Finishing that off. No holes. Entry, exit, stitch direction. So I'm hitting enter every time I'm changing um, the operation of this tool. Now let's take a look at this um, water for a second. And some people, here I'll change the color of the sky to a light blue to differentiate, and then I will come back in, grab my fill. Some people will do the fill of the ocean all at once, and they'll do one big giant fill here. Entry, exit, stitch direction. And that, that definitely works, but by using couple of different stitch directions. So I'm going to move this piece over to the side so that we can compare in just a moment. If I use the same stitch color, same thread color I should say, but I vary the stitch direction, so I'm going to break these waves apart just a bit. Entry, exit, let's go this way. And I'm going to use a walk input to travel down and come back over. So again, I'm pushing away from that center point. I'll do the second wave with a different stitch direction. And even though I'm using the exact same thread color, it's going to catch the light differently and give it much more depth and dimension. So if I come across this way, as this moves, you can see how light catches it differently. 
and those almost look like different colors. That can give you a lot of, again, depth and dimension just by changing your stitch direction. And then let me grab that fill again. So I'm using my walk input method to travel. I'm using my complex fill, and I'm using the traditional input method. You could use any of the methods you would like to do the water. Walks to travel, fills for the water. Entry, exit, stitch direction. Let's do this last one. So I'm going to travel down. I'm traveling under the edge so that that gets covered up later. There we go. Do this last little wave. Excellent. Entry, exit, and different stitch direction. So again, you can see, even though it's all using the same thread color, <coughs> pardon me, it looks very different than just a straight flat fill. All right, so let me delete that flat fill because we don't really want that. And now I've completely covered up my design. If I take this out of 3D, I can still see through it, um, but I can leave things in 3D so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. And what I will do is I will just hide all of the colors that I've done already. So I'm gonna hide the sky. Actually, that's the only one I really need to hide. I can get to the rest of them now. All right, so I've done the sky, the mountains, I've done the water. I'm now ready to do the tree trunks. Kind of got some stuff in the way, so let's double check it. Tree trunks are going to be satin. That's going to give me a nice rounded sculptural look. So I'm going to grab a column tool to do this. And you could use either a column one or a column two. It's completely up to you. I'm going to grab a column two. I'm going to digitize one tree trunk. Oh, and I just realized I am digitizing this in blue. That's going to be a really funny tree trunk. Give it a stitch direction. Very nice, very rounded, unfortunately the wrong color. I'm just gonna grab that element. And I'm going to change it to a brown. There we go. Now I'm gonna digitize in that brown. I'm gonna grab that walk normal. Travel again under that line. Finish that element and then I can finish this tree trunk. Coming up. Again, giving myself a good amount of overlap. Oh, got that a little bit long. Let's see if I can fix that. So my stitch direction made my length of my stitches a little bit too long, so they were becoming fill stitches so that they didn't snag and pull out. Now I got them back down to size. That's gonna work fairly well for me. Now let's grab that complex fill. Let's grab a green. Let's do the tree tops. So I'm gonna come here, over. I'm gonna hold Alt to make that straight across the bottom. Click, hit Enter. No hole, hit enter, entry, exit, give it a stitch direction. And now I'm going to insert a trim. That way it trims between those two trees. Grab my fill. Do this second tree real quick. Entry, exit, stitch direction. There we go. So now I've got my tree trunks, I've got my tree tops, and now I can work on the sky. So we looked at doing the sun rays as a satin stitch and the sun center as a fill. I think that will work really well. So I'm going to grab a walk stitch, I'm gonna grab a yellow, and I'm going to travel down, and then I'm going to grab my satin, or my column tool, pardon me, I'm going to satin back up. And again, you could either use a column one or a column two, and either one of those would work really well for this. I would not use a single line, even though they're the same width all the way through the form. Um, the single line tends to have the ends be at right angles, whereas this end is not, and that would not work as well. So I'm going to satin back up. And I'm going to continue with this all the way through the rays of the sun.
If you screw up, you can hit escape or go into edit mode and you can tweak those points. Continuing on now. And now that we've finished up the satin rays, I'm going to fill in the middle part of the sun with a fill. It's going to cover up all these travel stitches. So I'm going to grab my complex fill. And because this is a perfect circle, I'm going to use the automatic circle input. I'm going to hold Alt to make sure that that stays a perfect circle. It's just going to make my life a little bit easier and make my digitizing a little bit faster. I can come in here and I can rotate this if I want, or I could change my stitch direction to give it a little bit more interest. There we go. So now I have all of the elements in my design. Scroll up to the top here. Double check this. Yeah, I've got all the elements in my design, except that outline. So the outline is what I'm going to be doing last. Um, and just a bit of a quirk of mine, I'm going to do this in a bright green just so that we can see it a little bit easier. Um, but when I'm done, I will change it to obviously a black thread. So I'm going to grab a bright green. And here's where I'm going to decide, how do I get through this without a trim? So this is where I would, um, if I had my tracing paper and this on top of it, I would put my pencil down and I would attempt to do this without picking up my pencil. So with something like this, I might start here, not picking up my pencil, go all the way through, travel, come back up the mountain, down the other one, travel, and I can do this whole thing and I will cover up these travels with satin stitches. Up, down, travel under, do this piece, cover up all those satin stitches and then I can go all the way around my design and finish up that edge and I think that would work really really well. Alright, so let's get everything off screen get back to my digitizing tools and I will grab my satin stitch or pardon me my column tool I'm gonna to use a column two for this you can use any column tool you like and I've got my bright green excellent so I'm gonna start here I'm gonna come around do this piece There we go, so that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to grab my walk. I'm going to travel over so that I can do this mountain without a trim. I'm going to cover up that edge. I missed a little bit on that first part, but I can edit that back. Remember that if you are in the middle of something and wow, you really miss and you didn't mean to do that, you can hit backspace to remove the last input point that you used. So now I have some mountain stitches there, and I'm going to travel down, do this mountain. There we go. There we go, and then travel down here. And I suppose you could do all of the mountains and then all of the ocean. It's completely up to you. Both of those would get you through the design without a trim, so that would work. This isn't quite as smooth a curve as I thought, so a little curve point in there to help me out. myself some stitch directions in here. If you're using a column one, the stitch directions will be tied to the points, so you don't have to worry about it afterwards. I'm using column two, so it's a separate se step for me. There we 
go. Travel up, get that last mountain. Travel down. Take care of this, I don't know, shoreline, horizon line, whatever you want to call this. Using as few points as possible to get through the form. It's going to make it easier to edit later on. It's also going to make the lines a lot smoother. All right. And now I have this whole border. Now this border, again, is going to be a perfect circle. And it's the same width all the way through. So, like the sun, I'm going to use the automatic circle input method, and I'm going to use that with a single line column. Now, if I do this, I'm going to grab the right. I always guess wrong the first time I do it, but I can change it later, so it's not a huge deal. I'm going to start here. We're very close to the last stitch of my previous element. Holding Alt to make a perfect circle line up that line and I definitely guessed wrong so I'm gonna go into the properties of that and change that to left there we go and now I'm just going to increase the width so that, that covers that up I will zoom out I'm just going to hide my artwork. You can delete it if you want, but I find hiding it's nice the first couple of times just to make sure I have everything the way that I want it. And then I'm going to change this to a very dark color. And now I have this digitized. I have all the shapes input in, um, but I probably want to go through and adjust my properties. So I would go through, select at the design level. If you haven't done this beforehand, you'll want to do it afterwards. This has no tie stitches. That would be very bad. It would come out of the garment. So I would turn these on. Style one, width of sixth, default numbers only when necessary. All of that is great. Hit apply. I would then go down and choose my satin stitches. And for my top stitching, I probably want auto underlay. There we go. And then for all of my multi-stitch line elements, I'm going to go into underlay and enable auto. And that's going to change the underlay based on the size of the element, so that should work well for me. I hit apply and OK. And then lastly, what I'll do is I will play it out on screen and see what I think. How well do I think this is going to sew? Is it pushing the directions that I think it is? Did I forget something? Did I forget um, some underlay? Or did I miss an element? Or I'm going to speed this up just a touch. There we go, so we can watch that sew out. There's the mountain, there's the ocean. Notice those different stitch directions catching the light differently. No trims, excellent. So I think we're all the way through the design. I think we're ready for our first sew out. After we sew it out, we would bring the sew out back, double check, um, see if there was something that didn't line up. If I needed to move some of those fills farther under those satin stitches, if they pulled a little bit. Um, I could fix that in that second um, editing. So once you get this done, sew it out. Don't forget you're going to bring it back and probably edit it a time or two more. Bam.